10 seconds. Hello and welcome back to Matchday Live. I'm Verity Marchant. And I'm Felicity Hitch. We're outside the studio today presenting to you live from courtside. You can see the two teams warming up behind me. This is a basketball game, MMU versus Strathclyde University. This is the playoff final for promotion to the Premier Division and we are joined courtside by reporter Charlie Ball and injured player Jamie. Thanks for joining us. Three weeks ago, you guys won the national trophy against Loughborough. How was that feeling? Uh, it was just amazing. Um, at the start of the season, we set out three goals that we knew we could achieve, and that was to win our league, uh, to win the cup, and then today to uh, get promoted. Um, and that was great. Everybody loves a cup run. Um, and probably the best thing to do it against Loughborough in their own backyard was was very nice so uh yeah we're still still uh celebrating that a little bit but we're focused on today and um look, turning the focus towards today's game how do you expect mmu to play uh, personally i think mmu are going to strike start stronger defensively very aggressive but i think they will then try and transition into a zonal defense in the second half which they normally seem to do if they're struggling uh, offensively jamie what do you think they're going to do um, so offensively, you know, we've done our scout on Monday. Um, we're really looking to take advantage of our transition opportunities. We know we can get them. It's just about converting those takes into makes. Um, yeah, defensively, we know what we need to do. We need to be tough. We need to be ourselves. We've got to go after all of the rebounds offensively, defensively. Um, we know we can win this game. We just, you know, we have to show that we want to win this game. Anyone in particular to look out for? for the MMU side today? I would say me, uh, but unfortunately I can't. Um, obviously, Evan, uh, Manchester Giants, um, great player, Look, at, hoping he has a great game. Uh, Louis, our captain, uh, but I, I do think today, Dan, you know, is really gonna be in the spotlight. We have a big focus on rebounding and Dan just loves the boards, uh, you know, absolutely loves to rebound so today i think he's looking forward to it and i think we should keep an eye out for him. and obviously looking forward to monday as well you've got the big varsity game against junior looking for revenge after they defeated you the one blemish of the season yeah um wasn't a great feeling uh, to lose to them um especially it, it wasn't so much that we lost to them it was the way that we played we know we could play way better i uh, hands down the worst we played all season but um, you know, chance for revenge would always be nice um, and to have it back here would be great and hopefully the doctor clears me. Um, and we've got the basketball game on Monday. I've been that. Oh, have you? Yep. Sorry, I can barely hear you from over here. Okay, well you put up with three of the other players earlier yep. in the week, so let's cut to that video now. I am with uh, Louis, Kagan and Jamie ahead of the uh, playoff final to get to the Premier League. How are you feeling Louis ahead of this game? Yeah, excited. We had a really good game against uh, against Derby last week. We came away with a win, so another win here gets us through to the uh, the Prem Division. Uh, Kagan, excited about the prospect of playing in the Premier Division next next year? Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Better competition, and we're just going to be out there just trying the hardest to to get to the top three at least, um, and to stay strong in the top three at least. Yeah. So obviously we're here ahead of their training tonight. Uh, Jamie, anything specific in training that you're going to be looking to get go get into Wednesday's game? Uh, well, we just yeah, you know finished film, looking at uh, Strathclyde and you know how what kind of things they're doing on offense and their tendencies. So um, we're going to do our best to be prepared for that uh, defensively, and then offensively we'll just be ourselves. And obviously it's been a big improvement on last year. Uh, how do you reflect on the changes that you've made as the captain now this year uh, to the team? Yeah, really proud of the guys. Like considering where we were last year, we uh, we didn't have a good record. You know, the team morale wasn't there. We've really bought in together, and with uh, Coach Callum, we've really pulled through, and that is, we've really seen the results: the cup win, win our first playoff game, the league wins. So hopefully, we can do um, the last game and get through. Uh, Kagan, personally, what are you looking to bring to the game on Wednesday? Um, defense mainly, um, and just to orchestrate the offense a bit sometimes. So when I am on. Um, just to help out who, who might be shooting better that day and, and bring up the, the, de the defence for everyone else as well. Uh, the team morale seems high this year and Jamie obviously you're in charge of looking after them all, how's that been this year? 
Uh, it's been great. Um, I think this team as a whole has been doing really well, but the club, all four teams that we have, um, this is you know one of the first years in a while that we're all working together to get everybody better. Um, and I love bringing energy to the team. So yeah. Thanks and good luck for Wednesday, guys. Thank you for joining us on Match Day Live. Now we go to Charlie Ball for commentary. And welcome to tonight's offering. We have MMU, the home team, versus Stra University of Stradbach in the playoff final. MMU will be looking to get promotion to the Premier Division for next year and a big push after a national trophy win, winning the league, and also and also leading the playoff victory from last week against Derby, in which they won a tightly contested game. Um, and let's have a look at the team, starting with MMU. Uh, uh, for the starting five for MMU is Pietro Trotti, uh Louis Weaver, the captain, Evan Walsh of Manchester Giants fame, Ethan Tucker and Dan Davis. For Strathclyde, the starting five is Finley Baxter, Alfie Memo, Ethan, Evan Birch, Alex Peters and Tom Crack. On the bench for Strathclyde, we have uh, Ewan Giles, Jack Hamilton and Robbie Aitchison. MMU have a slight deep bench with the offering of Tom Wilmore, Ryland Borden, Kean Watkins, Kagan Rose, Antonio Darkwa, and unfortunately Jamie Bramsbury misses out with injury as you just heard. Um, with four minutes 30 looking towards this game, MMU are going to have to be strong and look to dominate early on in the proceedings if they want anything. Strathclyde looked like a big team with the ability of good perimeter shooting, so they're going to have to be aggressive on defense and maybe switch to zone if needed at any point. Um, Dan Davis was the star of the match from last week with 20 points and seems to be crucial again tonight if they're gonna stop Strathclyde who are a big team and MMU are playing very, very small tonight with Dan Davis normally a number three or four starting at the five position. He's gonna be crucial for the rebounds and also defending the big man. Louis is all, always a confident captain coming into this game, trust the team. Callum as well, very calm alongside Greg. Uh, and unfortunately as well, we've also got Noah who misses out today. I think he should be back for next week for the varsity game though, and that's a game that will be very, very important for MMU to win. Just not as important as this, but still important on the priorities to get the bragging right back to Platt Lane after unfortunately losing last week. Normally, MMU have been strong this season with their rebounding and their free throw making, and they're two of the biggest factors to win a basketball game. This will be very, very crucial, as it always is, to see them over the line and get promoted to the Premier Division. This will also be Evan Walsh's last competitive game for MMU as he will be leaving as he finishes university for next year. The rest of the team, however, apart from Antonio, who we aren't sure about as of yet, will be returning. And hopefully, with, along with this side getting promoted, they can have a very, very strong run in the Premier Division next year if they get the victory here today. And obviously, basketball has been a hot topic recently with the NBA playoffs. The WNBA draft recently with Caitlin Clark, obviously getting drafted as number one, and also the, the women's college basketball final recently. Here tonight, we are hoping for a very, very end-to-end -end exciting close game between two sides that will be vying for promotion to Premier Division. And I'll rejoin you closer to the game starting.
As we see now, Emma Muir entering the court, saying their gratuities to the referee, with Ethan, Lou, Ethan and Louis already there. Pietro, Evan and Dan will follow for the starting five. Now Strathclyffe ends up, and we'll have three, four quarters worth ten minutes each. And we will have the tip-off in the coming seconds. Everyone just shaking hands before the game starts. It'll be Dan to contest the tip-off with his opposite number, Alex Peters, for Strathclyffe. And here we go, tip off. It's one for by MMU, and they look to get off quickly with Ethan driving to the rim. Floater, short. MMU able to grab the offensive rebound eventually, and Ethan gives turns the ball over back to Strathclyde, who run up the court quickly. Takes the two pointer, misses, and Evan rebound for MMU. Ball straight to Pietro, and already calling the plays here. Ignores the pick and roll, but it's no good from Pietro. A sticky start to the game here from both teams, both with misses. And a three drain there for Strathclyde. Good way to start the game for them. Evan bringing the ball up, Dan at the top of the key. Fakes the pass, gets the foul, and he'll be shooting. Good start there for Dan. Tracks the contact and will go to the line for two free throws. Goes through his same routine as he does every time. And it falls quiet in the arena. Misses the first. In and out. Gets a second though, good response there from Dan, making sure they get both. Evan and Ethan with the half court press, trying to stop Strathclyde. Here's Alex Peters, gets it up to Alfie Memo, who drives to the rim. Air ball, but he's managed to get the rebound, takes the two, and he's short again. And Dan's fighting for the rebound, but Alex Peters Defends him, goes up to the reverse and draws the contact and will go to the line for two free throws. Chance here for Strathclyde to extend the early, early lead. First one short. Second one falls. Dan here gets it, gets it to Evan at the top of the key, gets it going for the pick and roll together, but is stolen by Strathclyde, who look to get up the court quickly, as they do, and makes the two points. MMU being put on the back foot here straight away with good defense. MMU look to slow the game down, however and get the, in the pick and roll, gets it to Louis in the corner, who misses the, the three. Better from MMU there though, the ball movement a lot better. With Pietro to inbound the ball for MMU. Manages to get it to Evan. Gets it to the pick and roll with Dan, who draws the contact and will go to the line for another two free throws. Good play by Evan and Dan there, understanding of the pick and roll, drawing the two man. Double team and getting it to Dan, who has draws contact at the paint.
makes the first. Gets a second to fall as well. Done. Now three out of four from the line. All of MMU's points coming so from the line so far. MMU again going with trying to get that half court press going on defense. Pietro tips the ball and Dan gets a steal eventually. Good defensive work there by MMU. Behind the back from Evan, who gets the pass to Louis, who draws the contact and will go to the line again. Very, very good play there by Evan. Good playmaking and a good, good jump by Louis to draw the, draw the foul from Strathclyde. Be Louis Weaver at the line here. Gets the first one to go. LMU will need to be accurate from the line here to, if they want to win this game. And he gets a second to fall as well. Good conversion so far from the line for MMU. Again, that full court press on play, on display by MMU. As Alex Peters looks to play make for Strathclyde. Ewan Birch gets the free to go short and Dan gets the rebound eventually. Fast, fast break and Pietro gets the easy layup. Strathclyde looking to play a quick game of basketball here, but Pietro Torati gets the steal and draws the foul. Strathclyde already nearing the bonus in fouls, which will draw MMU to the line. One more required, and then every time Strathclyde foul MMU in this quarter, they will be going to the line. Pietro Torati there with the first points, not from a free throw there from MMU, and then good work on the defensive end as well. Gets the crossover, goes for the three and drains it. Good from Pietro Tarati there. Step back three. Gets MMU back into rhythm and into the lead. Alex Peters here looking to play mate for Strathclyde. Out of bounds there. We see this a lot at Platte Lane with all the lines. Pietro now calling the plays. Looks like they're going to try and go to the pick and roll a lot here tonight. Pass just falls short, but Louis with some good hustle there and manages to keep the ball and Evan managed to get, manages to get his hands around it. But it will be a Strathclyde ball as it was a contested. Contested on the floor. Both balls have it. No jump ball in this league. Whoever lost the gets the ball. Hugh and Birch looking to get it into the lane, but Alex Peters draws the foul there. And it will be a floor foul from Dan Davis. On Dan Davis, I'm sorry. Finley back to look into inbound it, but passes it straight to Ethan Tucker, who looks to drive to the rim. Will go alone. Easy layup there for Ethan Tucker. And as Jamie there goes, he and you see Jamie in the background, just put his hand up. That's how it was. Easy like butter there for Ethan. A very good defensive display here from MMU as Evan Walsh breaks the pass up. Tries to draw the contact, but gets the layup in anyway. See MMU here fully going for the full court press now as they see the opportunity to steal the ball. Ethan Beck, clever on defense. And, and one there for Strathclyde. Alex Peters draws contact from Dan Davis and will go to the line to try and earn an extra point. MMU with a positive start. Now, after a bit of a slow beginning to this quarter, MMU now looking to be on fire with four steals now in this quarter and just under, under five minutes of playing time. They seem to be trying to 
force Strathclyde into silly mistakes, which they are doing. Pietro tries to play the pass into the free man. And Strathclyde get an easy lay up there. Evan, Evan Walsh there just trying to tell his teammates to calm down. Obviously, the more one of the most experienced players on this team. Just trying to get the ball movement going. Takes the open three. Short. Gets the tip on that, though, and, and it falls to a Strathclyde player. Finley Baxter at the top of the key gets it to Alex Peters. You but with the ball for the three, and is no good. Evan with the rebound there. Looks to bring it up the court, crossover. Jumps up the three, and doesn't make it. But Dan there with a good hustle to get the re offensive rebound, but Evan's unable to keep hold of the ball. But Ethan gets it out of the hand. Oh, and Evan's unable to make the difficult layup. Good hustle there from MMU. Open three here for Strathclyde. Doesn't make it, but they're able to get the rebound. But they're not able to follow it up with a layup. Dan managed to get the defensive rebound here and draws the foul. Change here for Strathclyde as we see Tom Crack come out the game. A timeout called actually here. Strathclyde looking to probably just strategize here as MMU are leading. See Coach Callum, calm as ever there. Taking his time to go over to the team and get the instructions clear as possible to the men on the court. MMU here leading the field goal percentage by a distance here with 60% 60, 60 from two compared to Strathclyde's 50. Also 83% from the free throw line compared to Strathclyde's 67%. They are also out rebounding and out stealing Strathclyde. Just trying to get that hustle going on the defensive end of the court, earning them easy points on the other end. They will want to extend this lead though and Strathclyde look a strong unit when they can get going get going quickly. But if MMU are if MMU are, aren't careful, Strathclyde will take advantage of this game. Coming out from the timeout here. We'll be done at the line. As Strathclyde here into the bonus here. Dangerous thing to do early on in the game to try to give away easy three points to the opposition team. Dan isn't able to make the first one. It's in and out at the back of the room. Gets the second one drained. MMU now leading 15 to 11. Dan Davis so far with four points, one steal and two rebounds. Very good from the man from Liverpool. Blocking foul called there on Louis Weaver as he blocks the clear path there for Strathclyde's number seven, Finley Baxter, to get to the rim and score an easy rebound. Two point up there by Alex Peters, no good. And MMU looked to get up to the other end of the court quickly. Dan taking it apart. Louis faking the shot. Gets it into Dan. Who gets the easy layup? Dan's first points not from the line there. Dominating early proceedings. And Ethan gets the easy steal there. Ethan deciding to keep the play going. By Hatton. Gets the layup. And he's good. Good there from Ethan Tucker. Four points so far in this game, but he's been more impressive on the defensive end. Sniffing the opportunity to get steals and get MMU going on the quick break.
Strathclyde now at the corner, trying to get some playmaking going. And he gets a nice fadeaway jumper there for two. Finley Baxter there for Strathclyde. Louis now driving to the rim. Falls out of his hand and it's a Strathclyde ball. See some changes here for MMU. As Louis and Pietro come out of the game. And we see Antonio Darkwa and Kagan Rose enter the game for MMU. Foul called there on the floor. Or is he in the shooting motion? It will be a shooting foul for Alex Peters. Two from the line. Gets the first one to drop. Second one falls in as well. Good start there from the Strathclyde man. And Evan gets a tough layup to go there, nearly drawing contact. MMU still on a man-to-man -man defense. Kagan gets his hand all in the face of the Strathclyde player there. With Dan bringing it up to Kagan. Gets, oh, doesn't get the open layup to go there, Kagan Rose. Unable to, to strike on that opportunity. Strathclyde also unable to make the layup with Antonio Dark for getting the rebound there and securing the ball for MMU. Kagan will now look to bring the ball up the court as he will now take the point guard position for MMU. Keir Watkins will be entering the game here for soon for MMU. Antonio with a nice layup, tough there, beating off the contact from the Strathclyde defender. Finley Baxter there gets it into the post. And this foul is called on Dan Davis, who will now leave the game for Kean Watkins. A correction, the foul was on Kagan. And Strathclyde will have some free throws here, as it's in the bonus now. MMU, too many fouls in this quarter. Leading by eight. Jack Hamilton at the line here, gets the first one to drop. Second one is in and out and unable. Kean, first action of the game to grab that defensive rebound there. Kagan looking to get in the pick and roll of Antonio. Gets a tough layup to go. Very well done from Kagan Rose in the pick and roll with Antonio Darkwood. Good play there from Strathclyde's number eight, Alfie Memo, able to get the pass through. I imagine to, on the court we'll see Evan play the majority of the minutes tonight. Kagan with a nice Euro step up and gets the layup to go again. Kagan Rose driving through the lane now like it's easy. And a tough layup there made from Strathclyde's number four, uh, Ewan Giles. Sorry, Ewan Gillies. Here now at the top of the key. Gives it to Kagan, gets the play called. Now Evan, 1v1 in the post. Gets the contact and makes the layup. Feels the guy on his back and rolls him. Six points so far for Evan. 100% from the field. Foul there from Kagan and Strathclyde will again be at the line. 
Two fouls now for Kagan in the game. As we see Jack Hamilton at the line once again. First one is no good. Not long left in this first quarter now. Gets the second one to drop. Evan Kean draws the two defenders. Can MMB get a shot off? Evan gets an easy layup to go. And the quarter ends with MMU leading Strathclyde by 31 to 21. Very, very impressive showing from MMU so far. Strathclyde just not been able to keep up with their tempo. MMU giving each other encouragement here. Coach Greg speaking to Antonio, just giving him some words of advice as he always does. Callum now goes into the huddle to see what can do better. MMU very, 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 very efficient in that quarter, much more than Strathclyde. Definitely from the free throw line, 75% for MMU compared to the 67% from Strathclyde. And offense, a more, more effective on the defensive end with five steals compared to Strathclyde's one and out-rebounding them as well. The two statistics you want to look out for in a basketball game where people win the most, it's rebounds and your free throw percentage. The more you make, the more likely you're going to win. MMU looking to get out of the huddle early here. Very, very impressive display so far. And it's just took some cameos very much in the team. You see again, Coach Greg just talking to Kagan just after a couple of hours, just how are you going to defend this? And just calming him down, calming the team down. And Callum instructions to the big men of this team, Antonio and Dan how to deal against Strathclyde. First quarter, a second quarter underway here at Flat Lane. Ethan on the ball, gets into pick and roll with Kean, no good. So he gets it to Evan who draws a double team and gets it into Antonio in the paint. Can he make the finish against two? And he does. Very strong finish there from Antonio. Kagan Rose again implementing this full court press that MMU go with normally in the first half of games. Kean able to grab the rebound after the three was no good. MMU looking to slow things down here now. Again, MMU looking for the pick and roll to go. Ethan with a deep three and he comes up short. Kagan needs to be careful here not to get into foul trouble on that full court press. Such an easy thing to do. Finley Baxter brings it up here for Strathclyde. Kean doesn't drop. Open layups missed again from Strathclyde. Antonio draws the player and draws the contact and will go to the line for two free throws. Very, very good offensive post play there from Antonio. Again, MMU just seeming to get into the line more and more as we see Evan come out of the game for the first time here for Rylan Borden. First one, no good from Antonio. As we now see four of the starting five out of the game now for MMU. Callum seeing the 12 point lead and deciding to give his guys some rest. Antonio is unable to make both from the line and a travel double dribble is called on Strathclyde there. Alex Peters with four points, one steal and three rebounds so far for Strathclyde. Ethan Tucker now takes control of the ball. Ignores the pick, gets it to Kagan in the corner. Unable to get the free to go, but Antonio gets the rebound and gets the foul and gets the point. And one there for Antonio, and he can get the chance to get a three-point play going here. Strong, strong play from Antonio. We 
can see four points of three rebounds so far. Two big for the Strathclyde players. Can he convert the play? Unable to. But strong play so far from Antonio. Double team there from MMU. Ethan contests the layup, but no, to no avail. Against a strong finish from Strathclyde. Kagan now looks to bring the ball up. Drives at his man. Goes for the layup. Gets it to go against three defenders contesting. Very well played there from Kagan Rose. After that open layup that he missed straight away, he's now got he's now had three layups to go. In, but much more difficult. Grabs the rebound there as well. And MMU are looking to take control of this match so far. Hands it off to Ethan Tucker. Kean in the pick and roll with Ryland. And he's blocked there from Strathclyde. And the ball is all over the place. And it will be... Strathclyde's ball. Greg making sure they take it from the appropriate position. Behind the back there, what a pass there. Oh, and he's unable to convert the three. What a pass there from Elfie Memo. Memo. A behind the back pass to find the open man in the corner. Kagan dishes it off to Ryland and makes the three. MMU now leading by 17 points here in the second quarter. Taking control of the game so far. Alfie Memo looking for the... Dishes it out. And the three is no good from Strathclyde. They're getting nothing to go offensively. Heave up the court from Ethan Tucker. Gets the player to jump in. Kian Watkins with the finish. Now leading by 19 points. Look at the MMU bench. They are hyped up here for this game tonight. They've come out for the kill so far in this game. Leading by 19 points. Great three there, as you see from Ryland. The bench appreciates that. Full applause from everyone there. A timeout for Strathclyde to try and get some sort of coordination between each other going. 19 points now is the difference. MMU need to continue will try and continue this pattern of play. As I said, they've still got they've got four of a starting five on the bench with Ethan playing all of the minutes so far, as Callum tends to do with him in the second in the first half. And he's having a strong game. Strathclyde now shooting 13% from the three-point three line, which is not what you need to do if you want to win a basketball game. They are taking too many shots from that line and not making them. We now return to the court. It will be the same lineup for MMU. Coach Craig just wants a quick word with them all. Keep them in line. Strathclyde now back on the court after a lengthy discussion in that timeout to try and see what they can do. Not many options from the bench though for Strathclyde, only able to rotate between eight players here at Flat Lane this evening and a foul called on Antonio. It will be on the floor. And it will be inbounded from the baseline. Alex Peters, and he's blocked by Kean Watkins, who also grabs the rebound. Gets it up to Kagan, who looks to slow things down now. And he hesitates with the pass and gets it stolen. But Kean is managed manages to get the ball out of Strathclyde's hands, who gets it back to Kagan, who will now look to slow the ball down even more. And MMU will look to get integrate a play now. Kagan with the open three is unable to make it. But MMU 
here able to make sure they get their plays going with that lead. Kian contests with a shot and Strathclyde again miss another easy layup there. Pattern of play so far. Antonio spins, unable to make it, get, grabs his own rebound and makes the second attempt. 21 points the difference in this game now. MMU absolutely dominating here at Platte Lane. Ewan Gillies there on the edge, playmaking, gets it up to Ewan Birch, who makes the layup again. Another miss and an ineff inefficient shot there. MMU there, not concentrating. And a foul there from Ryland, needless, as he misses, misses the open layup again. MMU need no need to put their heads down there, but a bit of a careless play. We'll have some changes here. Strathclyde trying to rotate as much as possible with just three people on the bench, trying to get minutes to everyone. First one is made by you, Evan Birch. Birch will look to make the second. And he does. Gets it back to a 19 point game. Taken with a quick pass up to Ethan. Kean looking for the pick and roll. Doesn't get it. Gets it out to Ethan who drives up to the rim. A reverse hand layup nearly is good. Kean gets the dime to go. And just making easy work of the defensive effort from Strathclyde there. Too tall, Kean Watkins. Four points and three rebounds, and also a block so far off the bench for Kia. And another layoff is missed from Strathclyde, contested well from MMU. Kagan looks to break quickly, looks to draw the contact and makes another tough layoff from Kagan Rose. Doesn't like to make the easy ones, only the hard ones. And then I see an open free for Strathclyde. Unable to go there from Birch. Kean with a full court lob up to Kagan. And it's blocked there very, very well from Finley Baxter. And it will be MMU ball as we see Louis enter the court again for Ethan, who will come off the court for the first time in this game. MMU now lead by 23 points in the second quarter. Louis with an open three. Air balls it. Gets open though, and that will be a positive sign for MMU, and that's what they've been doing all game, making the plays and getting open. <laughs> Finley Baxter gets the ball up the court here for Strathclyde. Gets it out over to Memo. Gets it to the big man, Tom Crack. Travel called on Strathclyde. Mistake after mistake for Strathclyde here, adding up. And just too easy so far for MMU. And again, we see Strathclyde with another change, highlighting the lack of support they have from the bench, making sure they don't all get tired by just utilizing the three. Kean gets the pick. And Kagan makes the deep two. MMU absolutely on fire and putting Strathclyde to the sword here. Finally, Strathclyde gets something going on the offensive end, making that two put tough two-pointer there. Something that they'll need more of if they get back in this game. Louis spin, tries to spin the defender around, gets the pick from Antonio and is unable to make the open dime. Oh, it's Given straight back to MMU there, with Kean grabbing the steal. Ryland gets the pass from Lewitt, needs to get the shot up as quick as possible. Kean gets the rebound, tries the reverse, but no good. 
And a foul called on Ryland there. Two minutes and 40 seconds of this second quarter remaining. As we'll see Dan come back into the game. And also Ethan. Oh no, Ethan just moving the spot up the bench. As we see, Kagan clapped from the bench there after a very, very good effort in the first and second quarter from him. Highlighting the pro prowess of this team as we see Tom and Dan enter the game. Antonio also coming off. Strathclyde, another three missed. And another rebound for Kian Watkins there. Dan Davis will get to play make a bit more with Kian Watkins on, on the court. Gets it to Tom. Wilmot, no good on the layup. But it will be an MMU ball after Tom Craig tips it out of bounds. 23 points is the lead for MMU here. Absolutely dominating on the court. Louis fakes for the shot. Gets four people and is unable to make the layup. And again, we see every player that comes on. Tom Wilmore also enacting the full court press here from MMU. See Memo take the three. And again, another three-pointer is missed here. Their three-point percentage from the line is now under 10%. Just inefficient with the ball here from Strathclyde. As we see it dip to as low as 9% compared to MMU's 25%, and MMU dominating on the field goal percentage, as you would expect with the scoreline. And also, they've got 11 more rebounds than Strathclyde as we head to a timeout. It will be an easy chat here for Callum. He just needs to tell the players to keep doing what they're doing and just dominating as they are. See Kagan, who absolutely just dominated the second quarter with that tough two-pointer to go. Pulls up, hand in his face. Absolutely sinks it. And that's the impressive quality of this MMU team. They have so many players that they can call upon from the bench to just cameo for them. Kagan, whether it be Kagan or Kian, who just are able to add that X factor to this, to this team. As we see MMU go on and go back unchanged. And it will be MMU's ball on the baseline. Strathclyde taking as much time as they can on that timeout. With one minute 47 seconds remaining of this first half. They'll look to go to Tom to play make. Dan looks the front up against the big man. Gets it to Louis on the perimeter for three. Unable to get it to go. Riley gets the board and draws the foul and will go to the line for two free throws with a chance to extend the lead here to 25 points. Ryland makes the first one. Ryland makes a second on, sorry, unfortunately it looked like it was going in. It fell short. One out of two from the line there, leading by 24 points now, MMU. As Finley Baxter looks to get something going for Strathclyde. Double team there from MMU. Open three for Tom Crack, unable to go. Finley Baxter grabs the offensive rebound, however, and will look to take a step back two and is unable to go another two shots missing there for Strathclyde strong strong defensive effort from MMU here gets the handoff Dan Davis gets it to Tom Wilmore who looks to go underneath the whole team and a foul is called on the number 12 of Strathclyde Robbie Ageson
Quickly inbounded to Dan, Dan Davis. Hand off to Louis Weaver. Louis drives to the rim. Gets the layup to go. Strong finish there from the captain, Louis Weaver. Adding more salt into the wound of Strathclyde's first half effort here. Can Craig get anything going? Dan with the strong contest there. And MMU get the ball as well. With 25 seconds remaining in the second half. Absolute brilliance on the defensive end of the court from MMU so far. As they'll look to drain the clock as much as possible here. As we see Strathclyde aware of that. So looking to double team as when, when possible. I mean, you want this to be the last play of the quarter. And they're just handing the ball with each other. Louis spins, layup, no good. Gets his own rebound and gets the rebound to go. And MMU lead by 28 points in the first half. Absolute domination from them. An absolute sh poor showing from Strathclyde here, unable to get anything going on the offensive end. And they need something from their coach here to talk with them, to try and get them something out of this game. They have not got anything going so far compared to MMU who have just been able to pounce on the mistakes. 8% from the three-point line for Strathclyde. Compared to, again, MMU's 25%. Strathclyde trying to get for something to go from that three-point line. And they've just been unable to. And you see it with the rebounds. MMU able to grab 22 rebounds compared to Strathclyde's 10. And also six steals compared to Strathclyde's 2. As we see this stat line here. And you can see the story from the stats. If MMU not very efficient from the line today. But... Strathclyde, very, very inefficient from everywhere else, as we see. MMU leads Strathclyde into half time, 55 to 27.
Welcome back to Match Day Live for action from the second half of this playoff final here at Platt Lane. MMU are currently leading by 28 points at half time and will look and need to concentrate more and more if they want to keep secure promotion to the Premier Division. Coach Callum Jones starts out with the starting five that started the first quarter for MMU. And he'll look to push the intensity as much as possible as he was able to rest the starting five as much as possible in the, in the first half of this game. Strath gets in post. And his first layup is missed from Strathclyde. And Memo miss, misses the layup. Dan Davis gets it into Evan Walsh, who receives it back who will look to go in the post. And easy hook, sky hook there from Fan Davis. Goes over the big man there. And gets the finish to go. Pietro looking to get the steal. Gets it. Gets the full court pass up to Louis, who dishes it off to Evan. Back to Louis for an easy finish there. And MMU starting as they finish that second that first half here in the second and third quarter. And Strathclyde giving the ball away and their heads have just dropped. Louis here with eight points so far in this game. All coming from the two point line. Pietro looking, gonna look to get in the pick and roll with Dan Davis here and he does and they just go out to Pietro for no reason on defense there, and Dan Davis gets the easy layup. MMU leading by over 30 points now. Memo looking to get the layup and gets a tough layup to go. Finally something for Strathclyde, as MMU heave the ball up from Pietro Tarati. Louis looks for the reverse layup, but gets, isn't able to get it to go. Louis off the floor, straight on the defensive end, and a foul is called on Louis Weaver. And Strathclyde will go to the line, and it will be Finley Baxter. They able to get the first one to drop. Noise now from the MMU crowd trying to distract Baxter, but he's having none of it as he makes both free throws from the line there. Evan drives by his defender, gets the pass out to Pietro, who drives in the lane, gets it. Good movement of the ball here from MMU. Until Evans unable to keep hold of it, but it is tipped out by the number seven, Strathclyde Baxter. Ethan, easy and Evan looks to get a shot off, is unable to. Louis for three, unable to make it, but Ethan gets a tough rebound there, but it's stole off him. MMU still trying to integrate this full court press on the Strathclyde team as it's worked so far, and it works again. The Strathclyde fall into the trap that MMU have set this whole game. Bounce pass, unable to go. There from Pietro Tarati to Louis Weaver. Strathclyde making changes. As, I know it's a timeout, sorry. There's a very, very happy MMU crowd at the half time. And a very, very happy MMU team, all in high spirits after what they didn't expect to be such an easy first half for them in this game. They now lead by 30 points. in this third quarter. Quick time out there for MMU. Strathclyde looking and pointing at each other to see if they can figure out how to stop this brilliant defensive approach from MMU. 
the full court press has been effective all game for MMU, able, able in, enabling steals to be found from nowhere. Seven steals for MMU compared to two Strathclyde and also six turnovers for Strathclyde. It's not what you want to see. See Pietro switch off to the shooting guard there. Ethan gets his hand in the face and his forces another miss from the three-point line. Fixture of this game behind the pass, pass from Evan Walsh. Pietro is right in the corner, unable to get it to go. Strathclyde. And miss another easy layup there. And Dan Davis is, unable, is able to get the rebound for MMU. And they're looking to play some quick basketball here. And out of bounds there, called on Ethan Tucker. Strathclyde, number nine and seven there, speaking to each other to see if they can try and get a play against this strong MMU defense. MMU just switching too easily for this Strathclyde team. None of their screens are working. Although Finley Baxter draws a foul there from Ethan Tucker. And he will go to the line for two free throws. Thirty points is the lead for MMU, looking to cut that down. Finley Baxter makes the first. Second one is able to go as well. Lead now twenty-eight points here for MMU. Pietro gets it out to Dan for an open three-pointer. Unable to get it to go. Dan Davis, not normally known for his perimeter shooting. And a blocking foul called there on Evan Walsh in transition. Still unable to get a switch defensively. Get an open man here, Strathclyde. Strath 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 Louis face in the defender and they miss another three pointer. Dan with the full court pass. Louis is unable to get the floater to go though. Great idea from Dan Davis there. Great court vision. And Strathclyde missed another layup there. And Dan, brilliant defensive effort there. Gets the rebound, is able to get off three men and hand it over to Louis. Evan Walsh with a deep three, unable to get it to go, but look who that man there, Dan Davis, gets the rebound, but unfortunately passes it straight to a Strathclyde def defender. And Ethan is called for a foul on what looked like a clean block. And Birch will go to the line here for Strathclyde. He's able to get the first one to drop there. And he's two out of two there from the line, much improved free throw shooting from Strathclyde in this second half. Looking to double team now our MMU and it works there as Strathclyde get the steal and there's a bit of contention about whether that was a made shot or not as he came down on the rim hard. Captain Louis Weaver here just looking at his players, looking to slow the game down and just keep their heads. There's no need to rush for them. They've just gone on a bit of a scoring drought here. Strathclyde look to try and double team the offensive player on the half court. Ethan fakes out the, the shot, gets it into Louis at the rim, unable to get it to go, gets the put back 
rebound, but unable to get the put back to go, but draws the foul and will go to the line for two free throws. First one drops for Louis as he's approaching 10 points for the game. And makes it two for two from the line there for Louis Weaver. Ten points and four rebounds for him. And the ref is getting Strathclyde to inbound the ball from the half court here. For the scorer's benefit. Another foul called on MMU there. It's Finley Baxter will head to the line for another two free throws. Pattern of this quarter so far with Strathclyde heading to the line. Finley Baxter gets the first one to drop. Gets the second one to go. Finley Baxter very efficient from the free throw line. As a Strathclyde so far, 84% now from the line for them. Again, you see this zone defense here. MMU able to break it. Evan unable to get the open shot just with a tip. Pietro gets the open three from the top of the key. Doesn't get it to go. And Strathclyde rebound. A better showing here from Strathclyde in the second half, second portion of his third quarter so far. The fighting to stay in this game. And a float of air for Memo, gets it to go. Now we see here, Strathclyde now implementing a full court press of their own, but even heaves it and breaks it straight away with a pass to Louis Weaver. And a foul, and an offensive foul called on Louis Weaver there. Strathclyde have got this deficit down to 22 points. Strong showing from them so far in this second half. MMU look to make some changes as Kagan Rose enters the court. As well as Kean Watkins and Antonio Darkwa. And you see Dan Davis, Pietro Trotti and Louis Weaver exit the court for now. Step back two, drain there from Birch. Some momentum here for Strathclyde as they get the point deficit back down to 20 points. Kagan Rose gets the open opportunity but doesn't take it. Evan Walsh tries the three but doesn't get it to go. Ethan able to get the tip and get the ball back straight away from MMU. Evan with the no-look pass. And Kagan just doesn't concentrate there and doesn't see the defender blindside. And easy layup there for Strathclyde. And a foul called there. On Strathclyde as two players get in the way of Kagan Rose. Alex Peters with 10 points in this game so far. Strong showing from him. As MMU just to get together here just to discuss what they're going to do. Memo with an injury to the face there is going to have to leave the court for now. And it will see Jack Hamilton take place, take his place. Strathclyde down to seven members of the team now. Ethan gets it into Antonio in the paint and gets the layup. MMU finally gets something to go on the offensive end. Finley Baxter looking to get something going against Kagan Rose. Birch 
fakes the shot, gets the open one and drains it. Some good two-point shooting from Birch here in this quarter. Ethan tries the reverse windmill layup, doesn't get it to go. He wanted the dunk, but had to stop it. Birch gets the three to go, and Strathclyde are suddenly on a run here, but gets them back into this game. MMU taking their foot off the gas here. Going for the extravagant when they just need to keep it simple. A 15-point game now. They've cut this lead in half. Kagan with a deep three, gets it to go. Kagan Rose once again for MMU with a deep three that puts them back in control. Momentum killer there, MMU will hope. Foul and one. Strathclyde don't stop the momentum and keep going and they have a chance to just annihilate a play there as they'll get a chance of three points from the line. Be Alex Peters here, very strong show from him, the man, Strathclyde. Gets it to go and a three point play there. Evan able to spin off to the defender. Gets it to Ethan. He's able to keep the ball, but MMU inefficient and rushing on offense here. Kian able to get a tip off and gets the shot blocked. MMU just needs to keep focus here and keep hold of the ball. Evan here, experienced player, gets it into Antonio in the post, unable to get it to go, but Kian grabs the rebound. And it gets blocked by Crack there. Great block on the defensive end. And suddenly, this is now, once again, a 13-point game. Strathclyde with the momentum here in the third quarter. MMU sloppy with the ball. Evan looking just to take some time here. Gets the open three and it isn't able to get it to go, but Kian is out, manages to grab the rebound. And it was out of bounds and it'll be MMU ball. Kian leaves the game. Leaves the court. Dan re-enters for MMU as they look to try and dominate the rebound in here. Bevan is not, manages to get it to Kagan. Out of bounds there. Luckily for Strathclyde as it fell straight into the hands of Antonio. Free under the rim. Antonio gets it, hands off to Evan who takes a quick shot and it's short. Antonio gets the rebound and his manages to get the hook to go for two points. Evan looking to try and get a quick steal there, unable to. Antonio Dark with a great game here. 12 points for the big man along with his four rebounds. Birch gets another two to go. Very, very impressive from Birch in the second, quarter here, uh, second half here. MMU looking to slow it down now with just 20 seconds on the clock remaining. And that ends your third quarter with Strathclyde ending this third quarter with some momentum. 13 points in it compared to the 30 points at half time. MMU will be having to look, look to discuss with each other here what they can do to just extend their lead and keep it simple. They have been very, very sloppy in that third quarter and just need to make sure they keep things simple for the fourth. Strathclyde much, much more efficient than MMU from the line with 85% compared to 60. And they've now overtook MMU from the field. Still, MMU are out rebounding Strathclyde with a margin of 13 rebounds between them. 
Strathclyde down to seven here, looking to discuss how they can keep this momentum going. In particular, Birch was very impressive in that third quarter, making some tough deep twos and some tough layups for his team. And as we see, a good, good sign here, Memo returning to the court here to the bench, ready to go again and help his team if they can see this fight back work. Both teams now entering back with the court with Louis and Ryland Darkwa entering for MMU. It will be MMU's ball in the final quarter of this playoff final. They'll continue with this full court press that they've been incorporating since the second half has begun. Strathclyde. And then you hand it off. Trying to get the play going. Dan drives into the lane and is called for travel. He's not happy about that, but see now we see MMU revert back to this full court press that worked so well for them in the first half. Crack gets in the post, but the skyhook is short. Dan gets the rebound from MMU, and they, they just look to slow things down here a little bit and make sure they get their plays going. Kagan dishes it off to Louis, who drives into the rim and is blocked there by Crack. And Burt shoots the three, doesn't get it to go. And Kagan grabs the rebound there for MMU. 13 points in this game now. Dan with the ball, drives into the lane. Call gets the foul, will go to the line for two free throws. Better play there from MMU bit more communication and correlation between the players there. See Dan head to the line for two free throws. Dan Davis gets the first one to drop. Some much needed scoring there for MMU. Two for two on the visit for Dan Davis. Back to a 15 point lead for MMU here in this fourth quarter. You see, you see Baxter for Strathclyde looking to four plays. Baxter tries to get the pass in and it's called Strathclyde ball. MMU bet the bench wanted that. Coach Callum trying to explain to the refs but unable to get the call. Baxter looking for the inbound. And MMU forced a turnover here. Antonio with the ball. But Lou, Lou's ball forced to Kagan Rose, who looks for the layup off the backboard, unable to get it. Dan gets the rebound. Antonio gets his rebound. And finally, the basket is good for MMU. Sloppy, sloppy play plays on both ends of the court there, but MMU able to get the two-pointer to go. We see some changes here for Strathclyde, making sure they rotate in and out. Looks like Crook took a bit of a blow there when that basket went in. We see Ryland making sure they can't take their time in the backcourt. Baxter drives by, gets the layup to go. Good finish there from Baxter. 12 points now for the captain of Strathclyde. Dan Davis looks to fake out, gets it out to Louis at the key, unable to get it to go, but doesn't get the rebound and it's tipped out by him. It'll be a Strathclyde ball, 15 points with seven minutes and 53 seconds remaining in this game. 
MMU once again going man to man defense. Birch goes for a tough two, airballs it, and MMU are finally able to grab the rebound and look to get up the court quickly. Louis now slows it down as they're in Strathclyde's half. Antonio with 14 points in this game. Kagan draws the foul. And will go to the line. Strong, strong game here from Kagan Rose, keeping MMU at arm's length from Strathclyde. First one goes for Kagan. Looking to extend the lead here to 17 points. Two for two from Kagan for the line and gets it to go for 17 point lead. We see some changes here for Strathclyde. As they, as they look to keep rotating. And we see a full court press again here from MMU. See if they can get an easy steal. Unable to do so as Baxter drives up the court. Crossover behind the back. Spin move. Doesn't make the layup, but draws the foul. Good from Baxter there. Crossover and spin moves. Gets MMU's defense in a wind. And goes to the line for two free throws. Baxter for two, been very good from the line so far. Makes the first one, gets the roll off the rim. MMU crowd making some noise, trying to distract the team here. Second one, no good, and Dan grabs the rebound, strong from Dan. Louis Weaver brings it up the court now, posts up. And Antonio forces the pass to Dan's feet and he's unable to get it and it's a turnover for Strathclyde. And he's fouled as he's shooting and we'll now see Ewan Gillies go to the line. See Pietro enter the game again here at Fort Ryland. Shoot two here to try and get the lead down to 13 po uh, to 14 points. Gets the first one to drop. Looks to make it two for two, and is able to. Strathclyde just keeping themselves in this game as they see another full court press utilised here. Petro just nearly loses the ball there. We see Dan get in the post, spin his defender, get up to and draws the foul and he'll go to the line for two free throws. Good spin move there from Dan in the post, getting free of his man and forcing the foul on him. Something we've seen all game, Dan Davis at the free throw line. Not unusual at all, a man who draws many fouls with his strength, and he gets the first one to go. And he's encouraging his team there to talk to each other there. Gets the second one to drop. Dan Davis, very efficient from the free throw line tonight. 70% all in all for MMU. We see Memo take a deep three and it's short and Dan grabs the rebound on the defensive end. Callum there just telling his team to calm down, 
to slow the game down as much as they can. Pietro gets the two, doesn't make it short on the shot there. See Baxter bring the court, ball up the court for Strathclyde, gets the switch on to Dam. Gets the deep two and gets it to go. Very, very good from Strathclyde and Finley Baxter there to get the play and get some separation from a defender. Again, a full court press for sees Dan fly, blow by the defence. Louis able to get the easy lay up there and the two. And a mistake there from Strathclyde. Sees a foul there on Kagan Rose by Jack Hamilton. Fifteen points in this game now. We can see a timeout called by Strathclyde as they look to see how they can come back from this fifteen point deficit. see MMU deeper in conversation than they were in the first half here as they look to close out this playoff final. Lead by 16 points. Strathclyde are one foul from entering the bonus which will mean MMU will be able to shoot every time they go to the line now. Every time they are fouled they will be at the line to shoot some free throws. Antonio getting the pick and roll there with Kagan gets unable to get it back good idea there from MMU but Strathclyde able to force a bad pass there by Kagan Rose Memo with the ball here for Strathclyde looking to get in the pick and roll with Pratt ignores it Gets, the, gets double team. Kagan ah, almost manages to get the steal. Louis with a good defense, but a tough shot made there by Ewan Gillies. The game now down to 14 points. As MMU give the ball away easily again, and Finley Baxter draws the contact and would go to the line for two. MMU sloppy offensively with the ball, and that full court press once again working. And they'll have a little team talk here. Finley Baxter gets the first one to drop as they look to make this 12 point game. Not something MMU will be happy with at all, making it very difficult for themselves in the second half. Finley Baxter finally doesn't get one to drop. Coach Callum looking for some strong play here from his team. Gets it to Dan Davis at the top of the key. Kagan looks to drive by his defender. Euro steps and gets the tough layup to go once again for Kagan Rose. Changes here for Strathclyde. Kagan looks out on his feet here after a strong display from him. The game is now at 15 points difference with four minutes 30 remaining in this final quarter of this playoff final. Finley Baxter gets the crossovers to get the switch off his defender and gets Tom Crack a good look, but gets it nowhere near the rim. 
Pietro with a ha quick handoff to Antonio, who manages to get the layup, and MMU playing some good basketball for the third time in the second half in this first half of the final quarter. And we see an illegal screen there from the big man for Strathclyde, and MMU will get the ball, leading by 17 points. You are not allowed to extend your arms when in a screen, and that's exactly what the big man did there. And once again, due to the winning of the tip-off, Strathclyde will receive the ball in the normal contest of a jump ball. Dindy Baxter, once again, looks to get the separation, but dribbles into Pietro, who steals the ball. He once again just thinks too quickly on the offence then, and it's a very impressive pass there. And Memo gets the layup to go. Very impressive off-the-floor pass from Strathclyde, as MMU now just look to slow the game down. Difference of 15 points. Kagan nearly loses the ball there, gets it tipped off him, able to keep control. Louis gets the ball into Antonio, and it's a foul on Antonio there, and it'll be a Strathclyde ball with 15 points in it. MMU just very, very sloppy in this final half, in the second half of this game, giving up too many easy points. See Strathclyde with the ball around the top of the key and they go to Baxter, their star man tonight. He's looking to try and get separation. He gets it for two and gets it to go once again. He is on fire for Strathclyde here with a 13 point game. Dan looking to slow the game down as much as possible. Gets it to Kagan, who Strathclyde now double teaming. Antonio looks to get the finish and he does. A very strong game from Antonio tonight. Gets it back to a 15-point game. 18 points and six rebounds, shooting 90% from the field. MMU looking to get another stop here. MMO drives to the lane, kick ball. And it will be a Strathclyde ball at the baseline with 14 seconds on the shot clock. Two minutes, 16, two minutes, 16 seconds remaining here. As we see, ta some changes called here. Strathclyde once again rotating due to their smaller bench size. Memo looks to get in the post with Louis. Faces up, step backs for three. And drains the tough three-pointer. Quietens the MMU crowd. Gets the game to 12 points. Travel there from Antonio. Some still some very sloppy mistakes from MMU here. As we see a timeout called here by MMU. MMU need to see out the difference of 13 points in this game with 1 minute 52 seconds remaining. Coach Craig just looking for some clarification on the ref from that last foul. Strathclyde with an impressive display in this second half from the position they were in in the first. They've showed some real fight to even stay in this game. It's particularly Finley Baxter, impressive, and also Birch with his impressive catch and shoot mentality. As we now see the players re enter the court.
Kansas City. MMU stick with the same lineup, I believe. Again, Finley Baxter trying to command this offense. Goes with the heave, hits the rim. Pass unable to go. We see Pietro blow by the defense and just looks to drain the clock down. The foul there on Louis, and he will be going to the line. MMU in a situation here where they can now control that shot clock, which could force Strathclyde into fouling. Be interesting to see if they get Ethan Tucker into the game with his strong free throw ability. Louis misses, Louis Weaver misses the first free throw. Gets a second one to go to extend the lead to 14 points with 1 minute 30 on the clock remaining. Finley Baxter and Strathclyde are going to have to work quickly here. Gets it into cracks, try and get a switch, doesn't get it. Birch with another three and it's short. Pietro gets the rebound. And we'll see MMU just try and utilise the clock a bit here as it's tipped out of bounds by Birch. Timeout, Strathclyde once again here, one minute ten on the clock remaining. And MMU come off the timeout with the ball. And it gets into Dan Davis, who looks to just get underneath the rim and doesn't get it to go. One minute, five seconds on the clock here. Strathclyde going to have to work quickly. Looking to get it into the big man. Step back free from Birch. Unable to get it to go. Doesn't, it doesn't grab his own rebound. But scrappy ball, but Louis, gets, Louis Weaver gets the rebound. Finally. And MMU just going to look to see this game out now. Pietro drives in. But it will be a Strathclyde ball with 33 seconds on the clock remaining. Strathclyde can have to work quickly with just 30 seconds left on the clock here. 14 points in it. Finley Baxter drives by the MMU defence. And will we see out the game here or will Strathclyde not give up until the end? And as we see here, Finley Baxter with an excellent display with 20 points and two rebounds. Very, very efficient. And now we'll see this game run out as MMU get the drive by. Wait, 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 wait. And MMU have won this game here. Very, very impressive. And they will be going to the Premier Division. As we hear, some chance of champions. Because that is what they are. And they have won this in contest. 87 to 75.
The real difference in this game is the cameos in the first half from MMU, just able to outscore and out-rebound the Strathclyde team in the first half. A very, very good effort, however, from Strathclyde in the second half. Able to make this a tight contest and get the MMU crowd crowd nerving a bit. It was a 12-point game at one point, at this point, and it was a 30-point game. Strathclyde can be proud of that effort in the second half. But MMU now will be reeling in the celebrations as we see them just them applause the competitors and as we see the camera get closer to this MMU side who will be very, very pleased with their effort this season. National trophy winners and now league winners and now playoff winners and they are now officially a Premier side team. It's been nothing less than they deserved this season. They've worked so hard and brought fought back from their disappointing season last year. In particular, Captain Louis will be very, very proud of what he's seen. Coach Callum, you see the big grin on his face, so happy with what his side has achieved and how far they've come. And it's the goals that they set out at the start of the year. They wanted this to happen and now they will enjoy being a Premier Division side. As we see the usual coach Callum talk after the game. As I remember from the National Trophy final, this talk was very much, let's focus on this game and the playoffs and try and get into the Premier Division. And the team have done just that. They work so hard every week in training and they're so well drilled from coach Greg and Callum. As we see, they are now champions of the playoffs. as they applaud the crowd. See Jamie there, impressive. Unable to play today due to a shoulder injury. And that is all. Thank you for watching. And... We'll see you on Monday for the Varsity. Goodbye.